And today on the Going North podcast, we're bringing some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is no different. Today is no different, especially as we're closing out this wonderful year of 2020. And that's probably a loaded statement, wonderful year of 2020, depending on your mindset and how your life is adjusted. But my goodness, we are going to be helping you elevate today, folks. You're going to be elevating today because this wonderful author right here, not only is he an author, he's a best-selling author as well as a lifestyle entrepreneur. He is the founder of the basketball, professional basketball combine, which features NBA draft prospects in a secondary draft combine, as well as a high energy inspirational speaker that's on a mission to elevate and motivate millions of people to achieve their definition of success. And it doesn't stop there, folks. His work has been featured in Forbes, Sports Illustrated, ESPN, NBC Sports, USA Today, Bleacher Report, and many more media outlets, just to name a few. So let's give it up for Mr. J.K. himself, Mr. Jake Kelfer. How you doing today, sir? What's going on? I'm doing well. Pumped to be here. Ah, yeah, that's right. Pumped without the pumpkin spice, right? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So as you know, with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 30 days long. So mind filling in any cavities I missed about you? I mean, I think you nailed most of it. But, uh, you know, a little bit about me is is I started uh, my career working for the Los Angeles Lakers, worked for the team during Kobe's final season, wrote my first book as a result of wanting to make a bigger impact, turned that into uh, speaking all over the country, was invited to speak in China, um, and then wanted to get back into basketball. And that's where we created the big the big pro basketball combine, which is now, you know, through through blessings has helped us uh, inspire and help 70 guys sign their first pro contract in 30 countries. And uh, now I focus on helping uh, millennial entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs really take their ideas, their knowledge, their purpose, and turn that into a, a profitable and impactful business. Heck yeah, man. Cause you're definitely high energy and folks are going to need that. And I love the fact that you're really giving folks networking tips because I feel like that's something that everybody needs either help with or something they need to be reminded of and heck even adding a different spin to it so like where does all this energy of yours come from man that's a great question that's a great question i i think look i think baseline level i was just born with a little bit more energy than than the average person i and i think that's true in a lot of our areas we have you know baselines but there's also been a lot of work that has gone into showing up and you know, for me, my big passion, my big, you know, purpose is to really uh, give people this incredible feeling of elevation in my interactions with them. And one of the best ways for me to do that is to show the energy and to make them feel they're, like they're the most important person in the world, right? And so that energy comes from a place of knowing that I'm here to serve, I'm here to, to create magic and I'm here to create memories. And, you know, if you think about Kobe Bryant, if you think about Michael Jordan, it didn't matter for them if they were playing in front of one person or a sold out arena, they were going to show up and give it their best and perform at the highest level they possibly could, because that's what they were here to do. And for me, that's how I show up. No matter how big the audience is, no matter if it was just me and you right now, the same energy applies because we're going to create the greatest interaction and experience. So the energy, you know, like I said, I have the baseline. I'm, I'm blessed for that, but I also choose to channel my energy into uh, you know, a place from, authentic value ah cool 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 that's what i'm talking about you think your love of baseball as one of your other favorite sports contributed to the energy as well on top of the authentic value i think i think my love for all sports has has definitely fed into it you know i i love going to sports games or watching on tv and just going nuts you know, celebrating with the boys, you know, the Lakers and the Dodgers both winning championships here in 2020. And that just got me hyped. So I think that uh, being in a, in a team atmosphere and playing sports my whole life definitely played into the role of energy and, and the, the, the impact I know it can have when distributed in the right ways. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And congrats to LA because y'all needed that, man. Y'all lost two Heavy hitters in the past year with Kobe and Nipsey Hussle, man. Like it, yeah. it, it's been a rough year for well the whole country. But my God, like you lose two heavyweights like that, and it's good that both teams, the Lakers and the Dodgers, able to get take on some gold, <laughs> like give LA some hope <laughs> through all this 100%. nonsense. One hundred percent. Oh my goodness! So my goodness, and they call you the Steph Curry motivational speaking man. So like, what three porters are really? 
got you to that title, man? Like, is, is, is it because of the energy or that you give on stage or whether, heck, even if it's one-on-one or one, two, 2000, like what, what led to that title, my man? Now, you, are you referencing the, the testimonial that, that Coach yeah. R gave on my website? Yeah. So, so in, in, ca- in case we're wondering here, that someone called me the Steph Curry Motivational Speaking. And, uh, and so I put it on my website. And it's one of the coolest honors that someone's ever, you know, made a comparison, right? Because it's not just uh, in the world of speaking, but it's combining my two worlds of sports and, and, and speaking. And so um, really that came from him as, as a way, because I'm always, you know, I always try to show up uh, and perform at the highest level. I'm going to show up consistently. I bring the energy, right? And I, I continue to do things that make people turn their heads, right? And that's one of the things we love most about Steph Curry is he's doing things off the dribble. He's going, doing pullback, step backs, all types of off, offensive moves that we rarely see. And uh, for me, everything that I do is I try to keep people turning their heads, keep people engaged, keep people surprised and uh, deliver uh, incredible experiences. Heck, amen to that, man. Cause that's definitely like one of the highest compliments anyone can receive in any arena, especially being in the motivational speaking arena with your basketball background. It's like icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very grateful for that, for that uh, statement. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And do you still do the whole Taco Bell thing too, my man? Are you still a fan of it? You know, I, I will always love Taco Bell. I will always love Taco Bell. However, I will say I haven't had Taco Bell as much uh, this year as I have in the past, but uh, I think Taco Bell will always hold a spot in my heart. Okay. Cause I was curious, like, man, like, isn't it usually a battle later <laughs> after so, too so much? Listen to, this. listen to this. This is crazy. So most people, when they eat Taco Bell, it goes straight through them quicker, quicker than you can imagine. Right. Right. Now, well, we'll talk, we'll get up, we'll get honest and open here. Like I'm, I don't eat dairy. I'm lactose intolerant. Now my favorite food item is the cheesy gordita crunch. All right. Kind of counterintuitive here, but literally growing up. And even when I was in college and a few years post-college, I could eat that and I would never have bad stomach aches. It is the only food dairy wise that did not hurt my stomach. So I don't know if it's one of those weird things that I just became immune to the cheese of Taco Bell, or if it just wasn't real cheese. No one has the answer. (laughs) (laughs) But what I will say is that Taco Bell um, brought me, has brought me a lot of happiness in my life. Ah, that's good. That's good. Indeed. Definitely a mystery too. (laughs) It's like the chosen food to, stay in Jake's body for a certain amount of time without making them sick. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you, man, you gotta, you gotta roll with those things when, when you can't eat dairy or when you got like stomach problems, like I got stomach problems, the foods that like re- I resonate with, I go all in on those foods. And so, you know, to have Taco Bell be one of those for so long, Oh, couldn't be more happy. Couldn't be more happy. <laughs> well, amen to that. So tacos, helping people and helping people to be the best versions of themselves, baby. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. That elite level of elevation, baby. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So my goodness. So with all of this wonderful energy that you have and still staying at this elite level and still connecting with all these wonderful people and heck, even helping folks still get those NBA contracts, man, what's probably the next big thing for you after this, since you're on this mission to help millions of people? You know, I think I'll be on this mission for my time here. You know, I think that in one way or another, whether it's through the books, whether it's through speaking, whether it's through coaching, whether it's through basketball, the mission is always the same to elevate people to that next level. And, um, and so what's next? Well, you know, we got an upcoming book. Book number three is coming out here and in 2021 is tentatively scheduled. So really excited about that. But the mission is always the same, right? Is we want to take people to the next level and we want to raise the level of, of life for people across the globe. Ah, beautiful indeed. So looking forward to that book of 2021. So what's going to be the big major topic? Is it going to be more nonfiction or is it going to be like you venturing off into writing your own sports novel? So this one is going to be an interview based book. So it's going to be interviewing some of the world's top performers, entrepreneurs, um, speakers, and it's going to boil down into some some very concrete truths. And that's going to be the the foundation of the book. 
And then what, what we're going to do, because I'm a big networking guy, is at the beginning of every interview, there will be actual a segment to discuss to discuss how that interview happened. So mm. how did I make that happen, right? Whether it was um, a cold Instagram DM, whether it was an introduction through a friend, whether it was through a 40 year buildup and then I finally made the ask because I wanna show people that there's all types of ways to connect with um, high level people across the world. And so there's that component, there's the interview component and then there's gonna be a research component that talks about the differences between demographics, the differences between success, and really breaking down the uh, the responses so that when people read this, they can not only get great content, learn how to be better connectors, learn how to be higher performers, but they're also going to really be able to understand what is the secret sauce that gets you from point A to point B faster. Ah, good. That's what I'm talking about. Looking forward to reading that. And since you mentioned networking, and that's basically your your basically your zone of gold, like your gold zone where all the gold happens for you, what will probably be two or three mistakes that a lot of folks make when they network, especially possibly in this virtual era? Oh, you're bringing up you're bringing up one of my favorite things to uh, to, to talk about right now. I'd say there are a couple main mistakes. All right, one of the biggest mistakes, especially when we talk about networking in in this economy in the digital age, is a lack of intention, okay? Mm. This is one of the big mistakes because what we see is two things. One, more and more people are on their phone, okay? Meaning that we have a chance to access more and more people. But two, more and more people on the phone, which means there's more and more people reaching out to the same people you want to get in touch with. And mm -hmm. so I'll even throw it even further. Three is that we are just, now that we have it, the accessibility to reach people every minute, a new person, whereas in person, it takes you 15 minutes to get a cup of coffee with someone, right? It takes longer. We have such speed that we are, we are seeing a lack of intention amongst why we're reaching out to people. We're seeing a lot more spray and pray and hope it lands <laughs> versus yeah. intentional outreach that actually makes sense for everybody. And that is something that's a huge, huge thing that we're seeing. So lack of intention is one big mistake. Um, big mistake number two that we're seeing is, um, is, is really not following up, okay? Mm. Because we do get sucked into this, I'm going to reach out to as many people as I can. We then don't follow up with everybody and we miss out on the right people that we should have been connecting with in the first place. And so following up is one of the biggest things that we're seeing can lead to exponential growth or stagnation and never advancing and then having all the doubts and insecurities of wondering, well, no one likes me. Why isn't anyone responding? Why does no one buy from me? Or why, why can't I do X, Y, Z result? And it's because we need to follow up. We need to continue to get into touch and into sync with the people um, that they're at. And then the third one, the third mistake, I know you wanted two to three, so I'll give you three. We're gonna, we're gonna bring home the heat here, is the third one, one of the mistakes that we see people is that they are reaching out to people. Um, they are reaching out to people where they want to reach out to, not where they, the, those people want to be reached out on. Does that make sense? Mm, Most yep. people are reaching out where they're comfortable, not where their target audience is comfortable. And that is a huge disconnect between connecting with two people. So for example, if you want to really connect with the millennial group, you're going to want to be on Instagram. If you are trying to connect, you know, and I'm using very generic answers here, but if you are trying to connect with like um, the business professional, you need to be on LinkedIn. Just because you are more comfortable on Instagram doesn't mean the person you're reaching out to, that's where they want to communicate. So those are three mistakes that, that we see, um, but they're all easily fixable. And that's the beauty behind each one. Hey, that's some solid advice right there. Cause you're so done right. Especially that last point where it's like, we're so good in our own comfort zones that we forget that, Hey, if you want to reach somebody, you have to be able to reach them where they're comfortable at, because they may be uncomfortable with being reached out to someone they have no idea who it may be, especially nowadays where everybody's an internet marketer and seller and they get pitched 24 seven. Like it's so darn true. Like it, that's solid advice right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we are all getting the same copy and pasted messages to grow your Instagram following to mm -hmm. sign up for this call and do all these things. And it's like, 
there are instant triggers that turn you off. Yet we never take the time to think about, well, how are we actually reaching out to the other person? Right. Mm -hmm. We think like, oh, well, our message is better than that person's message. So it's going to get through the noise. (laughs) But that's not the case because to the other person, you're both unknown and you're both asking for too much shit right away. And so instead, we got to build the relationship. We got to be intentional behind it. And we got to follow up so that person knows we're serious about making it happen. I'll give you an example here. I had a podcast. um, I had a podcast that I that I was communicating with. And the first time when I reached out to them, they didn't respond. And I was like, gosh, I thought, I thought I killed it. Like I had a good outreach. I had customization. I had a good subject line. I had all this stuff. And it was a pretty big podcast and there was no response. I was like, what the heck? So I followed up and the person's response was, you know, Jake, I have to apologize. At first, when I started to read this and I looked at it super quickly, it said podcast and I assumed that it was spam like every other person that reaches out, just a copy and paste template, a bunch of BS. And he said, but your subject line was intriguing enough that I kept on reading. And I was mm-hmm. like, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, good. And he goes, and once I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. We need to connect. And, we, and then, so I was able to get on the podcast, but that's, the, that's our mind goes to what we want uh, to avoid, right? Our mind goes to, ah, oh, nope, this is, this is another one like that. We need to showcase how we can break down that barrier to make it more easily available for a person to respond, communicate, and to get in touch with us. Ah, yeah, that's right. My man, Jake's bringing the heat, baby. That's right. He's bringing the heat. And it is not even that Miami heat either. That's right. Yes, indeed. It's from that Lando Lakes, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, indeed. So speaking of heat, a rare question I ask a few guests and I feel like you'll be up for it. So if you were to bake a metaphorical success cake, like what would the ingredients be in that cake for success? Ooh, that's good. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you three pieces. Okay. Three ingredients. I'm a simple guy. I don't want to have this fancy cake with icing, a bunch of different seasonings. No, 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 we're not doing that. (laughs) We're going, we're going simple cake, simple cake to success. Here's what it is. We got ingredient number one. We're going to sprinkle a ton of action. Okay. Action is going to be it. positive and intentional action. Second ingredient that we're going to whisk up a little bit is we're going to throw in connection, authentic connection. That's going to be our second piece. And then our third piece, which is going to bring the whole cake together and make it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, is pure life enjoyment. Mm -hmm. When you can have positive intentional action, authentic connection, and pure life enjoyment, you have created a successful life. Because you will always be moving forward, you will always be connecting with people, and you will be enjoying yourself in the pursuit of greatness. That is what we call the ACE method. So you can call this cake the ACE method cake. Oh, there we go, baby. There we go. Another home run, baby. That's right. That pure life enjoyment, baby. That's right. And that positive intentional action too. Cause that's really, I feel like that's the, and, and I'd love that you put the two words in front of the action piece. Cause it's like, Oh, take action, take action. But it's like, you gotta be intentional about it. Heck, even with the wonderful example you dropped earlier about you reaching out to that podcast host, making a customized subject line and actually making sure you customize the message too where after you followed up on it, it was like, hey, this is freaking awesome. So really just having that intention with the action too and not just like spraying and praying like a lot of folks tend to do, especially nowadays and heck even with things being automated, sometimes automated to death where you're basically literally automating to death where you're basically killing your metaphorical business with automation in a bad way. For sure. And and I'll even take it one step further here. A lot of us in today's world are good at knowing the basics. Meaning we've looked at all of the the big people we look up to, our role models, and we've listened to everything. We try to grow in ourselves, whether it's our fitness, whether it's our relationships, we're always surrounding ourselves learning from these high level people. And then what we're able to repeat is we're able to repeat the basics. Most people are able to repeat, take action. Mm -hmm. Few people know it deep enough to say positive and intentional action. And I'm not saying that I'm more special than someone else, but what I'm saying is that when you become a true expert in what you're doing, that's going to be able to provide the best results and biggest transformations, it's when you take it one step further, right? And, you know, we're talking right now and you're leveraging all of the answers I'm saying, you're bringing up new questions based on it. You're starting to dive deeper into it. You're showing me that you're listening, right? This is positive action in terms of building connection. 
right? This is intentional. Everything you're doing has a sense of intention behind it, which is so, so powerful. So I think that's something like that's super powerful that whatever it is that you're doing, you know, if you can repeat the basics, great. But if you can dive deeper into the, the, the minutia, that's where you become differentiated from everybody else. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That deep dive indeed. So what do you think is the main cause why people don't make that deep dive enough into heck with just about anything? Because it feels like folks tend to scratch the surface and they feel like they have just enough to get going, but they don't stay. They don't keep going after that. So th what do you think might be the cause for that? There's a couple causes here. The first one is because this shit's hard. <laughs> <laughs> there you <laughs> go. It's hard, man. Like, like, look, we, we, and and I'm, I'm, I'm a marketer, right? So, so I market a lot of things, and marketers want to make it seem as easy as possible. In reality, it's hard as shit. Oh yeah. But it can be easier than doing it alone, right? And this is something that's so important here to to dive into because. A lot of times we start and we don't see the results that we want. So we therefore don't think we can be successful, which then therefore leads us down the rabbit hole thinking that we are a failure, which then leads us down to questioning our self-worth. And ultimately, if we go all the way down at questions, should we really, do we really belong? All that from just trying a new endeavor or trying a new diet or new fitness program and it didn't give you the results you wanted and the speed that you wanted it. All of that can lead to that spiral. But on the flip side, why do we sometimes start and it doesn't work is because well, we expect massive results in a short amount of time. Let me give you this metaphor, since we're on the cake metaphor and we love metaphors here, is let me, you take a tree, okay? You take a tree, <laughs> right? And, and this, is, this, is, this is one old, old as day, right? You take a tree, you plant it in the ground, okay? As a seed. Your business starts as a seed. Most people want the seed to turn into a 50-foot behemoth a beautiful palm tree that I'm looking out from my window that's providing shade for a house. Most people want their business to be that 50 foot tree tomorrow. Most people want that tree to be their tomorrow, but that's not how it works. Sure, are there a few things that blossom quicker and just absolutely take off? Of course, but it takes discipline. It takes investment. It takes nurturing. It takes showing up. It takes consistent action, right? All of those things are what makes the tree grow. It's the same thing with our business. It's the same thing with our life. It's the same thing for whatever result we want to get to. We have to plant the seed. And the seed grows with us as we take intentional action, as we build authentic connection, as we enjoy the process of it growing, of the results, enjoying that, that shitty injury that we had in the pursuit of getting absolutely <laughs> chiseled, right? Like realizing that that's just going to make us be so much sweeter when we achieve that next thing. And so I, I think that's, that's something that I, that, that I love that metaphor. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Definitely love the tree metaphor. Yes, indeed. More ways than one, but I won't go deeper into that metaphor for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So since as far from your first ever rodeo, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these podcasts? That's a great, that's a great question, Dom. Um, you know, I, there's not, I've been asked a whole bunch of questions uh, throughout, throughout my uh, podcast lifetime, I guess I could say. <laughs> um, there's not a ton that, that people don't ask me, but I guess one that I would love for, for people to ask me more of is like, what brings me joy? You know, I talk about a lot of connection. I talk a lot about, you know, this energy. I talk about a lot about the things we've already talked about, right? And these are great because everybody gets to get a chance to hear these stories and experience this. But um, that's one question, like what brings me, what brings me joy? And um, I know you're going to ask it now. Yeah. So how does Joyful Jake find joy? What brings him joy? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's finding the beauty in the uh in the mundane it's finding the beauty in the ordinary it's it's creating the extraordinary from the ordinary it's the pursuit of something so exciting and uh you know the other things that I, that i think are really powerful for me in my life is like my family means the world to me and they bring me incredible joy my brother my parents love them 
my friends, my, my relationship, that brings me incredible joy. I mean, that is why I'm on this podcast today is, is through connection. And, and, you know, I saw a friend of mine who I was on his podcast. He was on your podcast. Then we got connected and now I'm on your podcast. Like the things that bring me joy are making the, uh, the things that a lot of people stray away from as simple as possible. And, um, and so I, I get, I find a lot of joy as much as I can. I choose to find the joy when I, when I show up. Amen to that. Amen to that. That's right. My man, Jake has a spider web as big as Jupiter now, probably. Yes. <laughs> that's right. With all the wonderful connection and the love of family. Well, that's not talking about indeed. Heck, might have to start asking the guests that more often about what brings them joy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, then again, if I have a guest in the future with the first name, Joy. <laughs> uh, well, enough about thinking out loud. So we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're a 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2020, with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? I'd probably give myself... I'd probably give myself because because 25 was two years ago for me. So two years ago, if I look at where I was, the advice I would give myself is that everything's going to keep working out. Just keep on going and keep on smiling. Woohoo! Well, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Solid as a rock, baby. Keep on going because it's all going to work out. That's right. In two years, the world might explode, but you'll be fine. That's right. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. So for those who want to keep in magical contact with the joyful Jake, what's the best way folks to reach out to you, my man? Instagram. That's where I'm spending a lot of my time at Jake Kelford. Just uh, head over there. Shoot me a DM. I'd love to chop it up. Oh, and for everyone that's that's listening, you can snag a, uh, a free copy of my book, Elevate Your Network, uh, at the link in my bio. There you have it, folks. Snag that opportunity, my friends. That great book, as well as the 70 plus tips for networking. He gives some stuff that folks don't think about. So definitely pick that up. It's really good. Still going through it myself, taking it bit by bit, because it's a lot of good stuff. My man's got a lot of wonderful value in there. And it's green for a reason, because you'll be energized to really take on the world afterwards, baby. You'll be ready to elevate elite style with this wonderful gentleman right here, folks. So head over to Instagram, slide into his DMs. That's right. And tell the computers not to stop doing it too, even though they probably won't. But hey, it's all good. It's all good. So any parting words before we close up shop, Jake? First of all, man, thanks for having me on. Love the questions. Love, uh, Love being a part of this, providing some uh, some heat for your audience. Hopefully they enjoy it. And, and the last thing I'll just mention for for everything is is you know we only got we only got one chance to win this game, okay? And this game is life. We only got one shot. And for us to have the greatest life possible, it's to relentlessly pursue all of our desires while enjoying the journey at the same time. And when you can do that, anything is is possible uh, that, that we go after. 